Thank you. There's absolutely a lot more questions than there are answers, and we hope our lawsuit would at least help us answer some of those questions or possibly uncover uh, a lot more questions. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for that call, Tony. Yeah, thank you for that. And, you know, um, when this happened, when the the f reports were first coming out about the Todashev killing, uh, it was... The, the people that I heard, like his roommate, I think, and some of his neighbors were saying that he had been kind of um, hounded maybe by the FBI for months and months and that they, they were saying, you know, this is it. This is the last interview we're going to have with you. Um, just give us this information now and then we'll leave you alone. And so I, it, there was a sense that I got that maybe he was getting frustrated with how much they were dragging this on. What can you tell us about that? Correct. I mean, he, he was really cooperating with the, uh, their entire investigation, answering all their questions, meeting with them. And they were very uh, visibly hounding him. You know, when, when police want to monitor someone, they typically don't let that person know that he's being monitored. Whereas in this case, uh, the FBI would very visibly send cars after him or to wait outside his apartment to send him a message that we're here, we're watching you. And finally, after a very long time of that questioning, uh, Ibrahim, it was time for him to go and visit his family and his siblings uh, back in Russia. So he actually purchased a ticket to go home to Russia. He bought a lot of gifts and presents for his uh, 10 siblings that he has over there, or his 11 siblings that he has over there. And he was ready to fly home. And then they begged him not to go. The FBI couldn't stop him because he hadn't done anything wrong. So they begged him. They said, please don't go. This will be the absolute last questioning. It will be the last time you ever speak with us. And I tell you what, Sean, they were not lying. It indeed was the last time he spoke to them, of course, but not by any way we could have imagined. Um, so he actually postponed this flight to sit and he answered six hours of their questioning. What happened in those six hours that would result in him having three bullets in the back and one bullet to the back of the head in addition to three in the front, that's what we're trying to find out. It just does not uh, add up. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. If you'd like to join this conversation, you can also send us a text to 813-433-0885. We're going to go now to Mike in Tampa. Hi, Mike. Mike, are you talking about a statement that made by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? <clears throat> I'm sorry, neither of our guests knows knows this about those statements. Sorry about that. Um, I'm Hello. Thank you for calling in, Mike. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to promote freedom of speech in our society and allow moviegoers to choose what movies they see in the movies, and it's definitely another thing to mandate school children to see a politically motivated movie. So, you know, two different subjects there, but thank you for calling in. Uh, Mike dropped off, but uh, so, I mean, he brought it up, The Intercept. Should President Obama the have to... The, the interview. The interview, that's right. Um, yeah, that's a big distinction. So the interview, um, you know, he, he said that President Obama kind of supported that it should be shown. Um, I, I mean, do you agree? I personally haven't seen the interview. And um, living 
growing up in America, I absolutely defend people's freedom of speech, whether I think that it's respectful or disrespectful. It's not really within my means to inhibit someone's freedom of speech or freedom of expression, whether it's artistically or not artistically. But when it comes to public education and the legislature mandating that school children watch a politically motivated film, that's, I mean, that's definitely legislative oversight and it's inappropriate. And the, the interview, kind of there's parallels maybe with the Char Charlie Hebdo um, cartoons in Paris. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org if you'd like to join this conversation. My guests are Hassan Shibley from CARE Florida and Layla Abdelaziz from CARE Florida. It's 1243 in the afternoon. My name is Sean Canaan and you're listening to Midpoint on 88.5 FM and wmnf.org. We're going to go now to Mohammed in Tampa. Hi, Mohammed. What would you like to say? Mohammed, I have to admit, I haven't, haven't heard our guests mention anything about the things you're talking about. Uh, in general, in general, sir, this is just my own statement. In general, uh, I don't know which movie, I'm sure there is bias, there is an ideology behind anything, you know what I mean? Maybe it's misleading or whatever, but at the same time, we need to respect freedom of speech and have the, you know, have programs like that to tell us the truth about what's going on. But at the same time, we shouldn't. People are working for many centuries to get to what we are at right now. There is, here you can pray, you can do anything in this country, in your own country. You can do that. Go back to any Muslim country. They will chop your head off. Mohammed, thanks for that call. Um, yeah. On. Uh, yeah, I think there were a lot of generalizations made in those comments, and I certainly appreciate the concern about uh, the need for peace and civility and discourse. I, I don't think making generalizations like that is, is productive. You know, uh, Leila and I just came back from Moscow, and one of the overarching themes of our visit to Russia was the great tragedy that the Russian people have faced and the people in Europe have faced over the last uh, century with World War I, World War II, uh, the millions killed by Stalin and Lenin and other dictatorships in the name of secularism, in the name of communism. Um, the, and let's not forget the hundreds of thousands who we killed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the half a million Iraqi children that were killed uh, with our illegal wars and attacks against Iraq. Um, you know, and, and the list goes on and on. People have been killed in the name of virtually every ideology and theology, whether we're talking about atheism, um, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, capitalism, dem uh, democracy, uh, autocracy, communism. People have done terrible things in the name of every single uh, theology uh, and political ideology. So that doesn't necessarily reflect that theology or political ideology. It reflects the bad actions of people. But obviously, we all need to be human first and foremost and value human life above religious and political differences. And I don't think anybody here is disagreeing with that. And we certainly believe that people have the freedom and the right to generally say what they want. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean uh, we should, with our tax dollars, mandate that children 
uh, watch politically motivated and academically dishonest uh, propaganda that is bad for this country. So we'll use our freedom of speech to oppose that kind of nonsense that does not belong in the classroom. Mohammed, thanks so much for that call. We're going to go now to Danny in Tampa in just a second. First, I want to give out the number. It's 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. You can send us a text to 813-433-0885. Danny, what's on your mind? Layla. It is. It is. Wait, uh, that, that is. It, it is. is. It Absolutely, and, and because we live in a democracy and because we have the ability to impact the, the conclusions of our legislatures, I definitely hope that everyone that's listening and that's worried about this political proselytizing happening in Florida schools will call their state senators, will call their house representatives and tell them to oppose Senator Hayes' um, patriotic film. It's called patriotic film screening. Um, that's that's the name of the you bill. You oppose patriotism? Is so, that what you're telling me? You know, me? it's very <laughs> unfortunate that we have to come off as opposing a, a patriotic film screening. Absolutely, absolutely. So definitely call in, let your senators know that you want them to oppose this, this bill that's bad for Florida, bad for Florida school children, and bad for America. Well, you know, it is very disturbing because in a society where we have freedom of speech, what D'Souza does in this film is he, he creates this overlying theme that Howard Zinn and um, Saul Alinsky were, as the former caller called in and said, were devil worshippers and their disciples are President Obama and Hillary Clinton. So therefore, President Obama and Hillary, Hillary Clinton, Clinton are somehow Obama. also unfortunately portrayed as devil Honest. worshippers and you know to teach uh, I, I don't group. know if the majority of eighth okay, graders when they watch a film like this can have the critical thinking to really understand what they're being told and, and to be honest I mean with a lot of the eighth graders and, and young students I've spoken to uh, I, I do have faith that I think they will find the film to be uh, complete rubbish and I think they'd be highly critical of it but that being said I just don't think we should open up uh, the education for uh, a, a partisan political pie fight uh, for you know every new administration to push propaganda that suits its political narrative. We really need to try to keep this partisan politics out of education as much as is possible, especially when it comes to such a bizarre uh, piece of propaganda like this film. Both ways, absolutely. Amen. Dan Danny, thank you so much for your call. Thanks for your call, 813-239-9663. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can also send us a text to 813-433-0885 or an email to dj at wmnf.org. Here's a text we got from the area code 813. And this person is asking, first she says, or he says, thank you so much for everything you both do for our community. You both are role models. My question is, other than calling senators and representatives considering the bill, what else can we do? And what's your advice to a freshman to follow in your footsteps? And this person says thank you and salamu alaikum. Well, thank you for um, those kind words. 
We do have Muslim um, Capital Day, which is March 17th. If you visit our website, careflorida.org, you can learn more about Muslim Capital Day, which actually gives you the opportunity to visit legislative session while it's happening, see the proceedings that happen in Tallahassee during the three-month period that our legislature proposes and passes laws, and really internalize the process and participate. So if you'd like to sign up for Muslim Capital Day, it's open to all people, anyone that wants to participate. That is um, March 17th, which is next weekend. You can visit careflorida.org to learn more about that. And if you're a freshman that's so interested, please visit our website and send in an email. We can use a lot of interns at the office. Interning is key. In 2005, in 2005, I was an intern at CARE in Washington, D.C., and now 2015, I, executive director of one of the you know fastest-growing CARE chapters. So intern, a volunteer, read. And I really believe activists need to invest time to grow intellectually to, and to grow spiritually and to serve others. Those are the three things. So make sure every, every day you set time to grow intellectually, grow spiritually, whatever that means for you, and also to serve others. And when it comes to this bill in particular, also not just calling legislators yourself, but mobilizing, Absolutely. mobilizing and organizing. Mobilize your friends, your classmates, uh, you know, and, and uh, people within the community, educators, to get in touch with their legislators and make it clear we will not tolerate that kind of propaganda in the classroom. 813-239-9663 is the number to call. And uh, we have uh, a couple callers on the line, but you can call in and, and get, get your call in before the end of the show. My name is Sean Canan, and you're listening to Midpoint on WMNF Tampa, 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. Our guests are Hassan Shibley, the Executive Director of CARE Florida, and Layla Abdelaziz from CARE Florida. And we're going to go now to Ernest in Tampa. Hi, Ernest, what's your question? Thank you. Well, absolutely. It sets a terrible, terrible precedent. And they have to remember, tables turn, political parties change. We just shouldn't set the precedent where the ruling political party will uh, promote propaganda that's going to uh, brainwash our children with the narrative uh, that they wish to misportray from our history. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for that call. 813-239-9663. We have Mike in Mascara Town. Sorry, if I get that name wrong every time. Mike, you're on the air. Yeah, I know. <laughs> thinking about this movie and then thinking about Germany before World War II, all the propaganda that the government forced down their throats for the youth in that, in that era. And this is totally something that should not be done for our educational system. If these people want to show this movie at their home or wherever they get together, the Republican Party or whatever, go ahead and show it. But to force it down the youth of America is wrong, just like it was wrong in pre-war World II Germany. And I really appreciate you bringing this up. Also, somebody call in and tell me maybe the next show who elects these guys? <laughs> I mean, really, who? What is going on in Florida where we have these people running our government? Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have a new wave of voter suppression laws, of very questionable gerrymandering policies, and really the Florida legislature passing laws making it more difficult for communities to register voters, making it more difficult for communities to mobilize voters. And we have dwindling voter turnout as well. When you have 30% of the electorate electing the, the elected leaders, and, and it's really, it creates these very, very problematic issues that we're dealing with and we have to fight back with. And I, I do want to say that, unfortunately, it is a very 
very scary potential reality that this bill would pass in the current legislature that we have in Florida. So it definitely okay, takes a lot of mobilizing and a lot of people calling in to hold their elected of officials accountable and call them out on this hypocr hypocrisy and let them know that there's absolutely no room for this kind of propaganda in our Florida school system. One of our listeners called 